Okay, so this set of lessons is part of the software unit for GCSE computing. And this one is all about operating systems, because that's, that's where we start. Now, everybody has seen an operating system at some point in their life. Okay? Um, the most common is obviously something like Windows. Then we have um, the Apple operating system, which is OS X, which is usually has a variation named after an animal. I think at the moment it's Mountain Lion, but you never know. We then have um, Linux, which is represented by Tux the Penguin. Um, and then we get to mobile phone operating systems. So then we have things like Android and iOS, which is obviously the Mac version of um, of uh, of when uh, the Mac version of of, uh, of 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 Android. And now I'll put my tongue back in. Right. So, how what is an operating system? The purpose of an operating system is to act as a barrier. Okay. Uh, if this is my wonderful diagram, and if you think down the bottom here, we have hardware, and then above the hardware we have the operating system. Now the purpose of the operating system uh, is to act as a barrier to the hardware. And it says, well when I press a key on my keyboard, it goes to, it sends that key in the keyboard to the operating system. And the operating system is a tran to translate electrical signals into something that the computer can use. So it's like translating um, key presses. And if you've got different operating systems, or if you're familiar with different operating systems, you'll learn that different um, button presses will do different things. And once we've done that, once we've got the key presses as well, we've got to then act as a barrier to put applications on. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware of, window, uh, of Windows and Office. Well, Office has a set of commands in itself. So, the operating system is supposed to take commands and pass them in between the hardware, the applications, and sit in the middle so that, so that it works. Now, without the OS, it won't work. Okay? Nothing would work without the operating system. So, this is how operating systems work. Okay? Now, what do they do? Okay. Um, right. OSs are not just for running applications, and they are the heart and the brain of a computer. They Allocate processing. We allocate processor time so that you can actually um, organize all the programs that you're running. So when you load up your computer and you click on iTunes and Windows and Internet Explorer all at once, it allocates the processor time. So it goes, "Oh right, you want to do all that at once? Well, we'll move things around so that we can actually make sure that all the programs look look all right." It also manages priorities. So, for example, if you are about to get a blue screen of death, the computer or the operating system will handle the blue screen of death and they'll go, oh, hang on, you're about to get a blue screen of death? That's fine. What we'll do is we'll allocate processing time to try and stop that before the computer, before the computer crashes. Okay? Um, it keeps track of RAM so and the processor. So it knows what the processor is doing and what the RAM is doing at any given time, so then it can allocate processes to work. Um, things like if you've designed to have a virus scan it, at the same time as you're doing everything else, it'll hold that one off until there's enough RAM free to keep going with it. Okay? Um, it handles Hardware instructions. 
such as keyboard presses and um, it also handles output like printing so it's doing all these different things at the same time they're really re it's really really working overtime and depending on how efficiently your operating system runs depends on what you're going how well your computer's going to run now there are different types of operating system yes we already know that there's things like windows and we know there's OS X or something like that but there's different types as well there are multi task operating systems and multitask operating systems are designed to do multi multiple tasks at once um, your example here is things like Windows okay it's doing lots and lots of different things at the same time and you can get multi user multitask operating systems now when we talk about these we're talking about things like um, supercomputers where you're talking about allocating lots and lots of different processes from lots and lots of different people all at one time and it's got to handle all those instructions there are these things called single task operating systems now single task operating systems um, the easiest way to explain them is probably something like um, mobile phones but not one of these fancy you know um, smartphones that you get now you're probably looking at these old um, Nokia 3310s which is basically a brick and all it's designed for is making phone calls it's one of those it's where you still got a keypad and you still got them and that's just going to do one task at a time but then you also have a single user multitask And these are the ones that you see every single day. These single user multitask are your OS X, your Windows, and they're the ones that you're going to see every day. Okay? Now, efficiency. Each operating system has its own efficiency. Now it's up to you to decide which one's the most efficient, but you can usually tell by looking at the hardware requirements for the operating system. Um, there's, it's famous that Linux is probably the most efficient operating system. But it's not that user friendly. Whereas Windows is more is more user friendly, but less less efficient. And obviously that is a big deal. So when you're buying um, when you're buying an operating system, always check what the hardware requirements are. And when you're considering what they can do, you you have to think. And OS X is probably about your middle line. It's very very user friendly, but it's also quite efficient. OS X is actually based on on a Linux on a Linux machine, so it really can be the balance of both worlds. It's up to you what you choose choose to use, but you've got to think about what you're doing and which operating system you require. If you want to do that for extra work. Go and have a look at how operating systems work. Anyway, that's the end of lesson one for the software unit.